Fort. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to another online keeper chat at the Fort Worth Zoo. We're going to give everybody just a few more moments to sign on and join us. So while we're waiting, take a look at the real stars of the show. Now that we've given everybody a moment to join us, welcome again. My name is Claire, and I'm an interpretive specialist here at the Fort Worth Zoo. And I'm here today with one of our gorilla keepers. This is Andrea. And Andrea and I are here to give you lots of information about our gorilla troop, but also to give you kind of an inside look at what it's like to actually work with these animals one-on-one. -on -one. So without further ado, I'll let Andrea introduce everybody. So out here in the yard, right in the front, in front of the tree, we have Winifred. Winifred is 29 years old. She's our heaviest female at 230 pounds. She was born at the Cincinnati Zoo and came to us in Fort Worth when she was just an infant, only about a year and a half uh, years old. Some of the funny things about Winifred, we call her Fred for short, that she is kind of the queen bee around here. We consider her the princess. So when she doesn't get her way, she kind of throws little temper tantrums here and there. Right below her is Jackie. Jackie is also 29 years old. She weighs about 190 pounds. And she was also born at the Cincinnati Zoo with Winifred. So Winifred and Jackie came to us together as infants. And because Winifred is our queen bee, Jackie kind of follows her lead. Uh, and kind of goes with the flow with whatever Fred is doing. So she is definitely, in this case, even though they're not related, she's the following little sister. Over to the left of the exhibit, behind the log, you see the big guy, that's Elmo. Elmo is 30 years old, he weighs 450 pounds. Elmo came to us when he was three years old from the Buffalo Zoo in New York, so he's been here for most of his life, like Jackie and Winifred. Elmo is a very laid back and kind of chill silverback. And when I say silverback, I'm talking about all adult male gorillas. So any adult male gorilla that you see across all species are considered silverbacks. His role is to protect the troop and to keep um, all the members in line. But because Elmo is kind of a softie, he really lets the girls and Gus get away with more than they should. Now to the left of him, over on the way far side of the exhibit, is Gracie. Gracie is 21 years old. She weighs 160 pounds. And she came to us about five years ago from the Oklahoma City Zoo. Now, Gracie and Elmo are mom and dad to our baby Gus here at the zoo. And Gracie's personality can be described as hangry, in one word. So she gets very cranky when she's hungry. I'm sure most of us can relate. Uh, so when she, it's feeding time, she is not afraid to let us know. Now, all the way over, the star of our show, to the right, playing with his ball, is baby Gus. Not really a baby anymore. He's four years old. He was the first gorilla ever born at the Fort Worth Zoo, so he's a pretty big deal. He weighs a whopping 72 pounds, and his personality, in one word again, energetic, just like any four-year-old kid that you would have at home. Now here in the exhibit, you can see that our gorillas are all busily munching on their lunch. They are all, like Andrea said, get very excited about meal time. Now gorillas are what we call herbivores, which means that they don't eat any meat. They just eat their fruits and vegetables. So here at the zoo, they get three meals a day, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, just like you and I have. Breakfast and dinner are all of their green vegetables. So you're gonna see lots of lettuce, kale, endive, bok choy, celery, good stuff like that. And then their lunch is all of their colored vegetables. So things like carrots and sweet potatoes, they like radishes and onions and bell peppers. And we give them a different mix of those things every day to keep it interesting for them. Nobody wants to eat exactly the same thing every single day. 
Now, since our gorillas are not having to go looking for their food all day, every day, like they would out in the wild, we like to give them something to do and think about here at the zoo. And we do that through something called enrichment. And enrichment is basically anything for the animals to see, taste, touch, smell, play with, tear into pieces. It's just out there to give them something to do during the day. So I'll let Andrea tell you about some of their favorite enrichment. So the favorite, their favorite enrichment is obviously food enrichment. We use a variety of uh, puzzle feeders and toys to hide food. So Winifred here in the front is uh, demonstrating perfectly. These are nets and what she has to do is manipulate the nets to get the hay out so that she can get the air pop popcorn out that's out there. We use a lot of small items like sunflower seeds, raisins, air pop popcorn, and oats to encourage wild foraging behavior. So we do that quite a bit in different puzzle feeders that change from day to day. Some of their other kinds of enrichment that they really like are old clothes and sheets and blankets. So in the winter time, you will see them with those a lot, especially when they're indoors. And Gus loves playing with blankets. So I'm sure you've seen him a time or two if you visited us. They also really enjoy um, things that they can tear up, like butcher paper and paper bags and cardboard boxes, especially Gus. He's a kid, so that's one of his favorite things to do. And then the biggest form of enrichment that we consider out here in the yard is baby Gus himself. himself. Because he's our first gorilla born here, the other adults have never seen a baby, and it's really fun to watch him interact with them on a daily basis. And as he grows and changes, they change with him, so that's really fun to watch as well. Now another thing that could be considered a form of enrichment here at the zoo is training. And our keepers do training with the gorillas every day. Now when we're talking about training the gorillas, we're not talking about training them to wear clothes or ride bikes or jump through hoops or any of the things you might see in the cartoons. Instead, we're talking about getting them to do things that help us to take care of them. You really can't make a 450 pound gorilla like Elmo do anything that he doesn't feel like doing. So it's a whole lot easier to take care of them if they understand what we need from them and are willing to participate. Usually then, they are rewarded by some of their fruit, which you may have noticed I didn't mention as part of any of their meals. And that's because we save it for the afternoon when the keepers can work one-on-one -on -one with the gorillas and use it as a training reward. Because fruit is kind of like gorilla candy. It's their very favorite. So I'll let Andrea tell you about a few of the things the gorillas are trained to do. So before I talk about training, I just want to be very clear that we don't ever go in with the gorillas. There's always a barrier between us. But just some of the few things that they're trained for, they are all trained to get on a scale for us every month. So if you were here at the beginning of the chat, you heard all of their weights. And that's so that we're able to monitor them and make sure that they're healthy and at healthy weights. We also have them all trained to open their mouths so that we can get a nice good look at their teeth to make sure their teeth are looking good and that everything is uh, healthy there. And we also have the adults and um, partially baby Gus trained to present different parts of their body. So two parts of the body that we ask for all the time is shoulders and thighs. And while you're at home, I want you to think about why would I want a shoulder and thigh and take a guess out loud. If you guessed shots, you are absolutely correct. So the gorillas have to get a flu vaccine every year. So shoulders and thighs are big meaty parts of the body that are ideal for injections. We also have Elmo trained to present his chest for an awake cardiac ultrasound so that we're able to get images of his heart. Because silverbacks are so large in size, they are susceptible to heart disease. So that's just one way that we can keep an eye on him and make sure he's healthy. And then we have Gracie, Gus's mama, trained to present her belly to the mesh so that we were able to get ultrasound pictures of Gus up to two days before he was born. Like Andrea said, a lot of that training goes into helping to make sure that we can have happy and healthy moms and babies here at the zoo. And of course, baby animals like Gus are everybody's favorite because they're so cute. But what most people don't realize is that a lot of thought goes into the breeding of animals at zoos. It's pretty tightly controlled by a program called the SSP, or Species Survival Plan. And through that program, there's a committee of people who are in charge of knowing about every gorilla in an AZA zoo in the country. 
They know who's related to who, how old they are, if they have any health issues, and they are the ones that decide which gorillas should breed with which gorillas. And the goal there is to have the most diverse gene pool possible to make sure we don't have any inbreeding and all our gorillas stay healthy and happy. So that SSP recommendation is actually the reason that we are lucky enough to have Miss Gracie here living at the Fort Worth Zoo now. The SSP recommended that Gracie and Elmo would be a good genetic match for breeding, but at the time that they recommended that, Elmo lived here in Fort Worth and Gracie lived in Oklahoma City. So our two zoos had to coordinate and work out the logistics of getting her down here safely and then she had to be introduced gradually into the group to make sure everyone would get along. And then fortunately for us, the two of them hit it off together really well. And now we have our cute little baby Guts who knows he's the star of the show. He's probably one of the cutest things at the zoo. <laughs> now, like I said, baby Gus is kind of the star of the show and he's really the one that everybody wants to hear more about. So I'm gonna let Andrea tell you a few of the fun facts about Gus which you wouldn't get to know from reading about gorillas in general, or even sometimes from being out here in front of the exhibit, just watching him run around. So I'll hand it over to her. So one thing about gorillas that a lot of people don't know is that they grow gradually, just like humans do. So right now we consider him a toddler. He's 72 pounds. And eventually when he's around 20, he's gonna be big and handsome, just like his dad at around 400 pounds. So that's something that a lot of people um, don't really know just looking at them. Some of the fun things about him are that his favorite foods change uh, sporadically, just like little kids. I mean, just like at home, some kids want chicken nuggets and mac and cheese and won't touch a Brussels sprout. And it's kind of the same here. Um, in the beginning, he loved tomatoes and bananas and grapes. Um, and he still loves those things, but he favors other things like his kiwi or his apples or oranges. So it's really fun to watch his tastes change as he ages. And then one of the best things that we've actually just recognized lately is that he is starting to vocalize more with the adults. So adult gorillas are not typically very vocal animals. They um, let off vocalizations whenever there's danger or whenever they're happy about something. So when they come in to eat, we hear what we call happy grumbles. It's kind of a low, deep rumble from all of the adults. And as Gus is shifting with the adults and with his mom and dad, we're hearing him vocalize just like them, which is really cute because he's not quite deep enough to be uh, making those happy low grumbles. Um, so they kind of sound like little squeaks at this point. Now taking care of and expanding the population of zoo gorillas is of course really important. But here at the zoo, we also wanna do anything that we can to help out the gorillas that are out in the wild. The ones that don't have the cushy lifestyle of nice ladies like Andrea bringing them food three times a day. Wild gorillas face a variety of challenges, mainly due to habitat loss as a result of mining or farming. And one of the crops that is rapidly expanding into gorilla habitat currently is that of oil palms. And those are used to make palm oil, as you might expect. Palm oil is a type of vegetable oil which is really useful for humans. We use it in hundreds of different kinds of things from peanut butter to soap. So the chances are you have some palm oil products in your house right now without even realizing it. It's so prevalent in the grocery store, it's really hard to come home from a grocery run without it. Fortunately for us peanut butter lovers though, we don't have to choose between helping the gorillas and eating things with palm oil. Instead, we can choose to buy things that use palm oil, which was grown sustainably. Or in other words, in a way that impacts the animals and the plants around it in the least amount possible. First though, we have to know what types of things contain palm oil. So, I have a scavenger hunt for you kids at home and for those of you who are kids at heart. I want you to go through your refrigerator, your pantry, your bathroom cabinets, and with permission, maybe mom's makeup, and see how many different things you can find that contain palm oil. To get you started, I have some examples of a few different things that commonly have palm oil in them. 
such as peanut butter, like I mentioned, ice cream, bread, margarine, and then even things like cleaning supplies and soap can use palm oil because it's useful for so many different kinds of things. Then, once we know what types of things contain palm oil, we can decide which things are made sustainable. And that may seem really complicated, but luckily, there's an app for that. So there's an app that you can download with your parents' help called the Sustainable Palm Oil Shopping Guide. And that will allow you to scan the barcode on any of the packaging on the items that you found. And it will tell you whether it's sustainable or whether there are some other alternatives that you could buy that would be more gorilla friendly. Then, the next time you go to the grocery store, you can make gorilla friendly choices and be helping the gorillas all the way out in Africa without even leaving your hometown. Now, I think we'll turn it over to you guys. We've talked for long enough. We want to make sure that you get your questions answered too. So, do you have any questions for Andrea and I about the gorillas? Where do the gorillas sleep? So, indoors, if you've been here to visit us at the World of Primates, you can see one of their bedroom areas, and that's what we call the indoor exhibit. And connected to that, we have another off exhibit area. And at nighttime, what we do is we give them lots of hay or sheets or blankets, those fun things that I talked about earlier, to help them make their nest. Now each gorilla is individual and they nest um, in different places inside, but if you come and visit us once we reopen and see the indoor exhibit of the gorillas, then you are going to see their bedroom firsthand. How many are there? We have five gorillas out here in this troop. And why are they endangered? They are mainly endangered due to loss of habitat which is just what happens when people decide that they have a different use for the space that the gorillas have been living in. So like we talked about, one of the things you can do to help with that is to buy sustainable palm oil. And do they get the same flu shot that we get? That is an excellent question. Yes, they can take a lot of the same medicines that we can and they do get the same flu shot as us every year. What are their favorite treats? So fruit is obviously their favorite. They really love grapes, um, but their big jackpot that we tend to use for training and to get them to learn new behaviors are peanuts. So peanuts are definitely a favorite among everybody. Do they really beat their chests? Yes, they do. And actually Gus just showed you that they beat their chest. So normally when a gorilla beats their chest, it's to ward off other gorillas to show that they're big and strong. And it's definitely what we call a display behavior. And that's just showing that they're big and tough. Um, and a fun fact that you might not have known about gorillas beating their chest is they don't make a fist when they beat their chest. They actually beat their chest open palm. Who's the oldest gorilla in the troop? In the troop, the oldest is Elmo. Not by much though, he just turned 30 in March. And Jackie and Winifred will be 30 in June and October. So they're all pretty much the same age. Do gorillas lose their teeth? They do. So gorillas have baby teeth that come in and they lose them throughout their, um, their growing process, just like we do. So uh, Gus actually is missing his two front teeth right now. We're waiting for those to come in. And it's kind of fun to watch because once his adult teeth come in, he's gonna have two really big front teeth and a bunch of baby teeth. How many hours do they sleep at night? So gorillas sleep when the sun goes down and when the sun comes up. So give or take 10 hours. Um, they're most active in the morning and right before bed. Uh, in the wild, uh, it would be the same. They're the most active first thing in the morning and they spend most of their day foraging for food and finding where they're gonna sleep next. How much do they weigh? Our biggest gorilla in here is Elmo, and he's about 450 pounds. He's a pretty big boy. Is it hard to train a gorilla? It can be challenging, absolutely. So training a gorilla is similar to uh, training a toddler, if that puts it into perspective for you. So we have to, it takes a long time to train new behaviors. It's not something that we can do overnight. So whenever we decide that there's something we want to teach them, so Baby Gus is a great example, uh, we're teaching him all the things that his parents know, um, and that's going to take months and months. So you're basically capturing a behavior, rewarding that behavior, and then eventually it all clicks into place. 
uh, for them. How long will Gus and Elmo be able to stay together? So gorillas, male gorillas typically reach puberty between 12 and 15 years old. Um, and at that point, that's when the testosterone is going to start to kick in and he's going to start to challenge dad more and more. But it's really going to depend on them and their personalities. Like I was mentioning before, Elmo is so laid back that we're hoping that they're going to be able to stay together longer than usual. But it's really just going to depend on them. Um, and the fact that Gus is only four years old and we don't have to worry about that until he's about 12, we still have a nice long time to watch him grow up with his dad. You mentioned that they make beds with sheets and blankets. Would gorillas in the wild do something similar? They would, absolutely. So they might not have sheets and blankets that their nice keepers give to them in the wild, um, but they will use uh, tree roots and leaves and um, sticks and different uh, foliage that they find on the ground to make their nests. Um, and it's really funny because we like to make a joke and say that Elmo is building his large bird nest. So to kind of give you a visual, that's what it would look like in the wild. Do the keepers, or do the gorillas know their names? They do know their names. So they probably will not respond to somebody they don't know saying their name. But for us, because we see them every day, all year round, and because they've had their names since they were infants, they definitely respond and know that we are talking to them. Um, what kind of climbers are gorillas? Gorillas are pretty good climbers. Um, they don't spend a whole lot of time up in the trees once they are full grown like Elmo, because he's a little bit big to be climbing too many trees. But Gus is still pretty nimble, and as you can see, he's been running all over the climbing structures in here uh, the whole time that we've been filming. How fast can they run? So, I was actually asked this not too long ago, and I, I had to look it up because I wasn't sure, but gorillas can sprint up to 25 miles per hour at their fastest, but gorillas are not typically runners. So, seeing one run is not going to be something that you're gonna see all the time. At what age do you start training gorillas? So we can start training them as early as a year old. Uh, we actually started trying to capture behaviors with Gus as soon as possible. And what's great about uh, Gus and Gracie is Gracie is so smart and loves training that he's picking up on things so quickly just from watching his mom. Do you have to provide dental care for the gorillas? We do. So when there is when there are dental issues with the gorillas, that's where our vet staff comes in. We have a full vet staff here at the Fort Worth Zoo, and we take care of it just like we would if you went to the dentist. We do extractions and root canals and um, all that fun stuff. How many different kinds of gorillas are there? So there are four different species of gorillas. These guys are western lowland gorillas. We also have mountain gorillas, which are the gorillas that you see a lot in the movies are the mountain gorillas. They're very fluffy. There's also the Eastern Lowland Gorilla, which are uh, look a lot similar to the Western Lowland Gorillas. And then there's a species called the Cross River Gorilla as well that's actually been more recently discovered. Do they ever play in the waterfalls? The adults do not, but Gus does. So when you're here in the summertime and it's 100 degrees plus, you're going to see him play in the falls, in the streams, and in the little pools up top. And every once in a while, if you can't find him, he is waiting in the moat. Uh, what is, how is the zoo involved in gorilla conservation? So one of the main things that the zoo does here, of course, is to have our breeding program so that we can expand the population within zoos. Um, but we are also working to help keep the zoo population as a whole healthy by participating in something called the Great Ape Heart Project. Um, Andrea mentioned that Elmo is trained for cardiac ultrasounds. And when we do those, we send the data to the group, the Great Ape Heart Project, and they are using that um, and data from other zoos across the country to figure out what a gorilla's heart should look like so that we can keep these guys healthy and happy for the longest time possible. And how can people at home help with conservation? Yes, definitely. So one of the things you can do, of course, is to come to the zoo and enjoy the gorillas. Uh, the more love and attention they get here, the better we can help them out. 
But like I said earlier, you can also be looking for those sustainable palm oil products. And again, the app that can help you with that is called the Sustainable Palm Oil Shopping Guide. It's really easy to use. Um, when I did my scavenger hunt through my house, I found over a dozen different things just in my kitchen. So when you guys do yours, see if you can beat me. Um, and then you can share your results on social media with hashtag Fort Worth Do. Do they have any favorite um, activities or training? So Gracie loves training no matter what we do with her. Um, <clears throat> Elmo, Elmo's favorite activity is pretty much eating and he loves to sleep. It's typical for a dad. In the winter time, whenever they are stuck inside and it's too cold for them to go out, they do like to watch movies. So that's definitely one of the their favorite activity, activities across all of them. Um, and a fun fact about Elmo, his favorite movie is Babe. How much um, are baby gorillas when they're born? How much do they weigh? So baby gorillas can weigh anywhere between four and six pounds. They're very small when they're born because mom has to be able to give birth quickly and keep moving. She can't spend hours in labor. Um, and funny enough, uh, we were able to actually see video of Gracie giving birth uh, when we were preparing and it only lasted about a half an hour, 45 minutes. So it was actually a quick birth as well. And he was just itty bitty. We didn't actually get a weight on him when he was first born because staying with mom is more important than all of that. And how many babies will a female have in her lifetime? So it really depends on, in, in captivity, it depends on the SSP and what Claire was talking about, those breeding recommendations that we get. But in the wild, they can have five to six babies in their lifetime. They typically only have one baby at a time, just like we do, but they can have twins. And that's actually a fun fact about Gracie, our mama gorilla, she is a twin and has a twin brother. Do they have any favorite foods? So fruit is their favorite food across all gorillas. They love it. Um, they really also enjoy their enrichment. So Jackie is really is really digging hard for the air pop popcorn. So as far as enrichment foods go, things that they don't get all the time, air pop popcorn is a favorite. And last question, what's your favorite part about being a keeper here at the zoo? So obviously the animals are my favorite part of being a keeper. I love coming to work every day, interacting with them, training, just spending time with them overall. But one of the big things that we really love about being keepers, myself and the other primate keepers, are you guys. We love that you love our animals and we love that you come to see them and ask questions. So if you see us, we're out here all the time checking on them, when you see us, please stop us and ask us questions because that's what we're here for. Again, we love that you love them and that is, that's, that's the best part of this job. So I guess we're going to wrap up our live feed. Thank you all for joining us and for joining Claire and myself and our gorillas. We hope to see you guys soon when the zoo reopens, but until then, everybody have a great afternoon.